welcome guys welcome to the food techies we are here back with you a new webinar new day today we it's a sixth day and we have it's a eighth session we are dealing with so today we have a speaker uh, from even a food background uh, and we are going to talk about general management of food production unit and the speaker is mr govind patkar sir he is a food technologist with ehs professional having 15 years of experience in manufacturing quality assurance quality control and ehs he has his he was associated in the past with uh, britannia chipita alana dominos and paratos the dominos and paratos was in foreign too so he has a uh, uh, opportunity to visit in the abroad for this uh, work purposes so here upon i call mr going sir to uh, turn on the webcam and uh, let's have a group session uh, just hold on yep yeah welcome to the session sir yeah yeah can you see me everything yeah. is clear yes sir okay. can you hear me Yes, sir. Good to go. Yeah, good evening, all. Good evening, sir. How are you today? Yeah, I'm my, uh, myself, Govin Parker. I am a food tech. Basically, I am a food technologist. So that's why you uh, called me here. Okay. <laughs> Basically, I am food technologist. Uh, then science graduate and uh, uh, trained in the uh, field of industrial safety management. That is uh, uh, basic basic necessity nowadays uh, to be uh, with the, at par with the standards. Okay. Uh, uh, basically uh, uh, ehs is not taken that much seriously in india but nowadays it has been started so uh, and uh, many of the people aware about uh, what is happening in ehs and uh, what should be the requirement of ehs that will uh, talk to uh, talk in later slide show okay uh, but i will i will explain about myself uh, i am a food technologist and it's a really honor for me to be Uh, get deliver a webinar on how the food industry run okay yes. because i have seen there are lot of uh, big names in this webinar so it is uh, my honor to be part of this webinar thanks for that that food tech is okay uh, we we are taking a very uh, we can say a very serious commodity here because uh, food you know in indian tradition even uh, it is called as a very much essential and we called anna he purna brahma many of the people uh, must be uh, aware about marathi so i am just delivering this uh, thought to all these people okay uh, uh, or otherwise roti kapda makan these are the all essentials so we are we are talking about today roti not exactly the roti uh, but uh, part of uh, food and uh, food is a cultural part of uh, indian society yes. and uh, we much uh, very much say food is god for us it's next to god okay uh, that's why uh, um, uh, we follow the ethical practices in food uh, we follow the safety norms of the food uh, and that's why uh, food is very essential and, and uh, need to be uh, delivered to a end customer in very safe manner okay that is what uh, the aim of every industry every food industry they should not follow any unethical practices and uh, they should uh, they should give you a, see uh, end users should not get affected by its quality okay uh, they should not feel ill after eating that that is what uh, the aim is and this is what uh, the world wide uh, every everybody is aiming to have the uh, safe food to be get delivered to their plates okay that's why we follow a lot of practices has iso brc uh, us fda and all that things okay that is to get a safe food delivered to your plate okay uh, i will not talk much about uh, this because this will come in a slide in a later way uh, so shall we start or we should wait for uh, uh, five minutes or something like that no sir no issues uh, we can start because many of our participants are already here so it would okay. be great we'll start with this uh, seminar okay okay yeah. so is my slide audible yeah 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 i can i can see your slide okay uh, so let's start sir Okay. Okay. Just give me a moment. I will just. Yeah. 
so mm-hmm. we are talking mm-hmm. about a general management of uh, food production unit what, what is general management why i choose this uh, topic okay uh, the reason is uh, very clear and uh, i'm uh, uh, very much uh, uh, miss uh, what we say up to point why i choose this because uh, see uh, uh, there are specific uh, things that people have chosen but i feel uh, many of the students are uh, getting involved in this live session so they should understand uh, what are the basic requirement of uh, any any industry but uh, this is uh, very specific because i am also a food technologist and we are also talking in a, uh, we are talking about the food industry that's why uh, this is general management of food production uh, unit okay so uh, next slide please yeah uh this these are the basic requirement basic requirement uh, first point i have mentioned have to have proper design plan as per the requirement of products okay operation and to meet the future demand what does this mean have to have a proper design why we have to have proper design there is a basic uh, necessity behind this okay uh, when you design any of the plan you should keep in mind the food safety perspective and then you have to design your plan okay how you can design you have to think about uh, your uh, drainage from where which point to which point drainage will go it should not come inside the uh, factory premises it should it need to be always the outside okay then uh, your people management how your people will enter how will they will enter to a production room how will they go out how will they sanitize their uh, hand or uh, their uh, whatever the clothes or requirement so these need to be taken in consideration before designing any of the plan <laughs> so these are the basic require okay then how you will uh, design your product flow means how your product flow will uh, go and it should not make any cross contamination because uh, cross contamination will affect your uh, final product quality and ultimately the food safety aim that is what we are planning for that's why we uh, we i have mentioned this have to have proper design plan as per the requirement of the product if you have, uh, see uh, there are high risk product there are low risk product there are ambient process product so as per that we design the uh, production line and uh, we we install our equipment we uh, do a lot of thing on that uh, and this see uh, to design it is not a, a single person's responsibility it is a responsibility of a core team that we uh, make as a core team while we do any greenfield or brownfield project greenfield projects means we start from a scratch there is no building nothing is available and we uh, do the Uh, uh erection and all that thing that is come under greenfield and brownfield means yes you have some basic uh, things available like building is available and you do uh, means mix and match combination and you do your uh, uh, process flow that comes under uh, your brownfield project okay so that's why uh, we we have to have a proper design and multidisciplinary team to design a Uh, any food production unit or plant also i have mentioned operations and to meet the future demand why because uh, there is a surge in demand uh, like uh, you uh, started with uh, 100 tons of production monthly and there is a 200 tons of production so you have to keep always in mind that there can be surge in demand so if there is a surge in demand how you will attain that demand so keeping in that mind you have to always keep a score to make a expansion of your plan so in terms of you have to keep some utility spare you have to keep some um, uh, your space to be um, uh, vacated and you have to make a futuristic plan okay so that is what uh, the thing is also uh, when the uh, demand surges that time uh, there is a bottlenecking comes and you have to find out the bottlenecking in uh, in design so you will have the need to take less effort while you uh, make the expansion of your plan okay mm-hmm. hopefully the first point uh, point is uh, uh, clear to everybody i will move to the second point should meet all the legal requirement why the legal requirement because if, if you are not legally 
uh, present you are present there as a factory but if you are not following the legal requirement of means it is a, a law that you have to follow of any land so you have to have the first the factory registration then mpcb wets and major fssi fssi is a industry specific requirement uh, fssi is not required for any uh, engineering industry okay so fssi is required for the uh, especially for the um, uh, food industry that every everybody should aware about this okay then you have to adhere to a factory acts then uh, Uh, you have to do a registration under the scene means uh, the corporate identification number then gst goods and uh, service tax number see all these you have to make sure that while your plant is getting erected at the same time you are doing all these things parallel so when you are go live go live means you are going for a production that time you are uh, fulfill all the requirement of the uh, legal requirement of uh, that particular factory otherwise you are doing only uh, the thing of erection and uh, machinery and uh, trial run dry run and all that supply chain planning but meanwhile if you forgot about all these thing then it will come as a barrier and this will uh, this will delay the go live process of your plant okay next slide please okay uh then we come to uh, this uh, various department in industry uh this is uh, this is broadly uh, i have uh, uh, defined this uh, you can see uh, means see production is a uh, center action or you can say center of attraction and all things revolves around uh, production like qc qa r and d npd because uh, production is what we do and for that uh, all the all the departments are uh, um, uh, doing their hard work or uh, doing their jobs okay it is not to show anything as a uh, less or anything is not taking but production process uh, is the major process in any industry and after that comes the uh, all uh, supportive function and uh, believe me supportive function is equivalently important uh, for any industry not only the production because see, qa qc is not there npd is not there maintenance is not there you are helpless so always remember all functions are uh, important but okay they revolve our, around the production process okay uh, uh, i i have broadly mentioned this production <clears throat> okay then qc and qa r and d and npd uh, many of the people know about uh, r and d is a research and development and npd is a new product development uh, many of the company have r and d or npd uh, they do um, research and development uh, to launch a new product uh, they do some research to launch a new product totally a new product then maintenance is equally important without maintenance you can't run your facility effectively maintenance and utility hr and ir also uh um, human resources and industrial relationship uh, that also matters because they have to take care of the people grievances and uh, all that thing they have to provide you manpower they have to do the employee employee engagement they have to do training so these all uh, mention departments are also equally important okay accounts and finance you people know supply chain that is uh, uh, they do purchase they do billing they do dispatches uh, there is a a uh, two way supply chain one is for the raw material and another another one is for your finished goods uh, raw material supply chain means you do planning of your raw material as per your requirement or as, as per your projections and then you have the dispatches as per means you are to do it pan india you want to do export all this planning uh, is part of supply chain okay it it is required uh, in any industry now so that is also integral part of uh, food industry regulatory and legal these people take care uh, one of the crucial thing because uh, without uh, having the regulatory and legal part uh, you 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 can't uh, say that i am 100% perfect okay uh, because uh, these are very crucial things like some licensing some uh, new requirements up uh, come up so they have to uh, they have to tell us the management or the company that these are the new requirement coming up and we have to follow these new requirement to run our industry okay 
the sales function you people know sales uh, do the uh, job of sales and all that marketing is there for the advertisement marketing of the product to get display the product in the market so these are the uh, general requirement of any industry uh, so it is required in a uh, food industry also can you get to go to the next slide please okay uh, then comes the um, manufacturing process what does mean by manufacturing it is very simple production of product using 3ms for saying it is very simple but uh, it is having uh, 3ms involved in it what are the 3ms man material and machines okay these are the one of the crucial thing crucial thing in any industry because a man if you don't have man you can't run your industry if you don't have material planning you can't run your industry and if you don't have your uptime or your machinery not available also you can't run your uh, 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 production okay so that's why these three m's these three m's is uh, uh, required in any manufacturing industry and that's why uh, this is also required in a, a food industry can you go to next slide please okay uh, how to handle three m's this is a subject uh, means you can say a debate okay uh, see uh, manpower you need to be very skillful to handle the manpower okay uh, at the same time you need to be mindful and at the same time you need to be your emotional involvement need to be there to handle uh, the manpower why i am saying this this is maybe nobody will say but i am giving the insight uh because we we do the ehs sort of thing so in that also in our ehs training also we say uh the emotional involvement with the manpower is somehow required otherwise it is very difficult for you to uh, uh to get work done from their side because if you don't understand uh their emotional side i'm i'm not saying you need to be very 100% emotional that's why uh, mention that skillful and mindful okay and at the same time emotional because every individual have their uh, different need that need to be uh, that is not possible every time to cater but you need to at least listen to them what problem he is facing why is behaving like that that's why it is always uh, says that the behavioral practices and the mapping of behavior is a uh, need to be uh, tracked in any industry because uh, see a uh, man have their uh, uh, emotions and the mind so sometimes uh, we uh, do it on a emotional involvement and that's why uh, we uh, destroy the uh, our uh, we say professional life okay but at the same time that's why i mentioned need skillful mindful and emotional involvement to handle them as every individual have a different mindset okay because these these people have the other two things material and machine don't have heart or emotions but these people have the emotions so you have to touch their emotions you have to listen to their grievances and all that things every time i as i said as a industry it is not possible at least but at least uh you whenever you go to industry or uh, in future you will definitely go to industry you will sit in corporate or you will sit somewhere and you you need to listen to your subordinates the people working around you that will give you the insight about that person and uh, you can you can enhance their efficiency okay so that's why in man uh, in out of this 3m the man handling is the most critical thing because they have the uh emotions in one okay i will move to the material okay this is also uh, need skillful business minded cost saving quality uh, best approach in selection of vendor see uh, uh why we need skillful because uh, we have to match with the requirement what exactly what kind of um, raw material is required or packing material is required to uh, our to Uh, manufacture or to pack our product that you have to uh, means uh, take the guideline or take your um, specification from the qnqc and you have to uh, uh, do uh, uh, the purchasing or buying as per that 
that's why i mention it as a skillful okay then business minded if somebody is asking for higher rate or something like that you always have to think how it can affect per unit cost or per kg cost or the cost of final product if i buy at this rate because see uh, somebody will i will give the example somebody will say uh, i will increase your rate by 1 rupee a kg okay but if you required that material to be uh, get 50 kg in your in your uh, 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 production then 50 kg cost will get uh, increased so you have to always think in that uh, manner you have to be tracked in that way that okay this uh, this 1 uh, uh, rupee kg will affect in this way so you have to take the approval you have to negotiate uh, if, uh, means see, this is all about uh, how you can control your cost okay so that's why business minded uh, approach is required then how you can do a cost saving in material you can do a uh, different vendors like uh, one vendor is always uh, uh, you can say a very bad combination in it single vendor if you are if he is providing any raw material or packing material to it is very much uh, dangerous combination for any industry that's why you have to develop multiple vendor you have to give them specification you have to think on that same time how you can um, do the cost saving then quality based approach in selection of vendor uh, see uh, there is a process uh, quality assurance process of uh, any vendor approval so you have to follow that pr- process and then only you have to approve your vendors uh, then uh, by uh, the mention frequency you have to uh, audit the vendor okay and uh, also need watchful approach on both the side of supply chain that is rm and md what does it mean watchful approach means there are uh, some fluctuations in uh, uh, raw material prices okay but there is a uh, one price is given to you let's say as per your agreement or something Like that but there is a huge fall in your raw material price or packing material price that same time you have to ask for uh, the difference means difference if you are say let's say you are buying at 100 rupees a kg and some uh, the price fall into 80 rupees a kg there is a 20 rupees difference okay so that will be your cost saving factor so you have to ask your vendor that uh, why should i i not getting benefited out of this 20 rupees okay don't give me 20 rupees but at least give me 10 rupees that will that will give me um, uh, a cost effectiveness to my product okay so all this uh, means you need to be connected with the um, uh, what is happening around your in the market or particularly where you are sitting what is happening around that you need to be very uh, very 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 connected with the uh, the industry you are with okay then okay i will come to the machine i see uh, machine uh, is need to be this proper selection of the machinery is required and also you have to have the futuristic approach while you are uh, uh, while you are uh, uh, means, uh, installing or uh, purchasing a machine for your uh, particular industry because it should suit to your product okay it should give a maximum output uh, through through the um, uh, means the run okay uh, and Uh, possible uh, always always uh, choose a machine uh, which can you can do a multiple use like a single machine can do a 100 gram packing or 200 gram pack- packing or 5 kg packing that need to be in mind and uh, as per that you have to uh, approach to your vendor and okay uh, for the machine up time you have to do your preventive uh, breakdown and predictive uh, maintenance in a proper way because preventive maintenance always give maximum up time and uh, uh, availability of the spare parts and all that things that need to be there that will give the effective approach to a breakdown uh, process and this predictive is a, a little little uh, not very much familiar in the uh, maintenance planning but predictive maintenance means uh, there is a Uh, a breakdown cycle breakdown after let's say uh, 100 hours of uh, you do uh, machine run and there is a 
breakdown so this is a sort of predictive breakdown this is very new to a maintenance planning but okay uh, this is uh, mainly we consider preventive breakdown uh, uh, sorry preventive maintenance and uh, breakdown maintenance this is uh, two are the uh, major uh, maintenance can you go to next slide please how food industry different from other manufacturing industry this is this is that is what i am talking when i start the conversation with all of you uh, we deal with the most complex product as we do food production which is meant for the direct human consumption or as a raw material to some other food industry uh, see uh, we we deal with the human okay because either somebody will eat our product directly or uh, somebody will use our product as a raw material to their food industry <clears throat> that's why um, we are different from all other uh, manufacturing industry because we uh, play with the life of the uh, people and that's why uh, we need to be extra precautious extra careful and we have to implement ethical practices and uh, all these things to make sure that what we are doing is uh, up to mark or uh, what we are doing is is at par with the industry okay that's why i mentioned we deal with the two safeties one is occupational safety whatever we do is comes under the occupational safety and another thing is the food safety food safety is uh, 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 top most priority but uh, you can't ignore the occupational safety also because what occupation uh, people doing or you doing that should not affect either your employee or uh, the surrounding of your uh, company or it should not get uh, affected by your practice so that is why occupational safety is also equally important uh, please next slide uh, this is the who uh, define what is occupational safety or ehs or shg there is a uh, uh, ehs also we uh, industrial uh, safety management also called as a ehs shg safety health and environment because uh, safety health and environment is always there because uh, we say environment it is inside environment of your factory outside environment of your factory and also health of your people as well as if you are doing anything uh, means any process industry sort of thing that is also Uh, the equally important of the health of the surrounding people who stays nearby or who uh, works nearby that is also equally important not only your people's uh, health but also the people who stays nearby or surrounding area that that is also uh, equally important this is this is the uh, uh, you can say a uh, definition that you can uh, read it and we can go to next one okay we can go to next slide what is food safety this is also a definition of food safety food safety is used uh, as a scientific discipline describing handling preparation and storage of food in a way that prevent food borne illness okay any any of the process what you are doing that need to be checked okay for uh, that also i think yesterday uh, we have the session for the food safety i hope so in that process uh, there is a risk assessment part uh, i think discuss uh, so risk assessment we do the risk assessment of each and every process okay uh, risk assessment can be done through various uh, uh, process okay and otherwise we do pdca plan do check act also uh when we uh, do a new enrollment a new uh, process um we say um uh, what we can say a new uh, process identification we do that time we do pdca plan do check act and in that process we 
uh, always do all this sort of thing and we find out the risk involved in that process and uh, uh, how it is going to affect our food safety culture or food safety practices that we follow in in the industry that's why uh, we do the risk assessment uh, after outcome of the risk assessment we uh, uh, do the changes in the system or we do a uh, control measures on that so uh, it will not affect uh, the food safety in any manner next slide please oh here comes the um, a major thing uh the quality assurance and quality control okay uh always remember quality assurance comes first and quality control comes in a uh, in line second okay why why quality assurance is known as a qa and focused on preventing the defects okay this is clearly mentioned this is uh qa means uh, it is a proactive approach to the, your process okay that's why quality assurance come first and quality assurance will give you the guideline how to uh, do the quality control okay uh, there are there are many tools you can uh, use in quality assurance and you can do the quality control uh, methodology for the particular industry and industry, it need to be industry specific you can't uh, uh, just write down some four or five tools and you just implement it it is not like that you first you need to understand uh, what are the requirement of that particular industry or that particular uh, food process because bakery industry may have the different quality control techniques tools and uh, a fish industry may have the different uh, because their uh, requirement of the means uh, there can be a uh, high shelf life product high risk product these these are the things that can be there as per that you have to design that's why uh, methods and process and design for the projects are implemented correctly and this quality assurance is always in a picture as i told you in the earlier slide uh, there is need to be multidisciplinary team so quality assurance and quality control need to be part of that design team why the design team because uh see if i am from the engineering background and i don't know about uh, anything about the food industry and i am the project head so i i will always consider in my way uh in an engineering way that is not wrong because uh, if uh, i am a food technologist i will uh, first first priority will be the food safety and then accordingly i will design the plan right so as per that it is that's why you need anywhere if you go in a food safety even if you go in a project design team the required uh, thing is you need to have the uh, means multidisciplinary team who can give the inputs okay so that so that's why you need multidisciplinary team who can uh, do the quality assurance activity and they have to monitor verify that process and used to manage the create the deliver deliverable have been followed and are operative quality assurance is a proactive process as i told you earlier it's a proactive process and is a prevention in nature preventive in nature so please please uh, specifically um, uh, just uh, follow this word because this is proactive approach because uh, you do something uh, which is which is prevent or which is uh means uh, in your ideology or due, due to your risk assessment or by all the things you make a plan that something will not go wrong that is what uh, you do uh, that is why it is called as a proactive process and preventive in nature it recognize flaws in process always remember flaws in process that's why quality assurance is uh, need to be there before the quality control because quality assurance can give the guideline and can you make a documentation process or some sops to control your product quality quality assurance has to be complete before quality control this is what uh, it is okay that you you have, whenever you go to any industry always remember the process first come the quality assurance and then comes the quality control okay okay these are the uh, um, you can say uh, part of uh, one coin okay but quality assurance is it need to be there then only you can do quality control in a better manner and better way because you have done the risk assessment you have done the because your 
approach is proactive and as i said preventive that's why quality assurance is always always need to be there before the quality and then comes the quality control is known as a qc and focused on identifying a defect so you can see the um, uh, uh, difference here it is identifying a defect and quality control is preventing a defect so uh, you give uh, means you implement quality control why you implement quality control because you uh, you have done the uh, preventing uh, means preventing measures okay and quality control is there to identify if anything is going wrong as per brought down by the quality assurance that's why we have the online quality control system and quality control system dispatch control system that's why because these uh, these things are already brought down by the quality assurance and given to you as sop and you have to follow that sop and you have to uh, uh, act as per that you see ensures that uh, uh, the approaches techniques method and processes are designed in the project are following correctly that is why i told you uh, it is need to be designed uh, during the pro project phase or the uh, particularly see there are not only the uh, uh, phases which is uh, erection and uh, completion of the machinery there is a quality assurance uh, projects also there to improve your quality uh, benchmarking or um, to implement a new standard or there are a lot of quality related pro projects also okay you see activities monitor and verify that a project delivery will meet the defined quality standard quality control is a, a reactive process and is a detection in nature detection in nature okay it recognizes the defects quality control has to complete after quality assurance hope all you people got the difference between quality assurance and control and uh, you also uh, get a fair idea when to uh, complete the quality assurance and when to complete the quality control so the uh, baseline is you have to first implement the quality assurance practices and then you have to do the quality control next slide please okay uh, these are the some basic uh, food safety certification and standards uh, we follow uh, to just deliver a safe food to our customers okay has sub uh, everybody knows about this who are the food technologists or associated with the food business mostly people know what is hasap and how what are the principles seven principles and how they will get implemented and even the hazard analysis critical control point that is i will not go in deep that because uh, uh, these are the basic things every food technologist nowadays uh, they Uh, no and they understand okay because uh, uh, the nowadays the uh, food safe safe food culture is uh, growing flourishing so uh, i will not go in that deep but i will uh, talk about fsc 22000 version 5.1 this is the latest version okay how you will implement first uh, there are stage 1 audit and stage 2 audit and this is uh, uh, fsc 22000 is uh, not only talk about uh, about only the food safety now it uh, talk about um, i must say a general approach a safety approach of food industry because this is fssc is uh, specially designed for a uh, food uh, industry uh, it have some points that is 9001 Uh, which which now uh, days uh, fssc 22000 version 5.1 talk about uh, fire safety which is earlier not part of uh, your uh, uh, version 4.1 okay also it talk about the waste management uh, it talk about the waste passive and all that in depth how uh, well food vernal liability system and all that so uh, this is uh, nowadays uh, called as a one of the complete approach of um, uh, fssc 22000 because it not only talk about uh, food safety it talk about industrial safety also and which is equally important as i told you earlier so this is very good step uh, taken by uh, uh, the accreditation bodies and uh, it is it is it is helping in uh, very much way because uh, earlier uh, earlier only we talk about food safety right now we talk about the complete a need of the industrial safety as well as the food safety a uh, brc issue 8 uh, you are also aware about uh, what is brc and uh, 
uh, that uh, comes now with for the uh, food and packaging these are two uh, uh, different uh, standards you have to go through and you have to uh, make sure this is one of the stringent standard brc is one of the stringent standard uh, fssc yes surely uh, but brc is uh, one of the stringent because uh, uh, they they talk about uh, the facts and figures and they say uh, whatever you do uh, do it authentically don't don't uh, just do it uh, to just name sake okay so that was that is what they say and there are certification system grading system and uh, there is also two audits uh, uh, so you have to follow means there is unannounced audit also in that also you have the grading a a plus plus and all that things uh, that uh, you will come and this is one of the stringent standard that is what i feel uh, us fda is also no doubt us fda means uh, uh, if you go to the us fda uh, training it is sort of training it is not uh, that uh, you will have the la certificate or something lead auditor certificate or something because but they uh, they means they uh, give you the uh, sort of certificate when uh, they, there is always a discussion there is no exam or such thing they do uh, on the basis of uh, uh, outcome of uh, group discussion and how serious you are about the food safety and all that uh, it is one of the means another stringent standards uh, in the field of uh, food and drug and Uh, safety uh, food safety okay next standard uh, next slide yeah uh quality control uh, it include tool described defined by qa uh, it include sop gmp documentation defect finding etc even qa defines waste management in very scientific way waste can be processed at in house or can appoint authorized waste management agency why i uh, mention this because nowadays uh, uh, you you uh, must be aware about a ban on uh, plastic uh, plastic related thing then there is a scientific process uh, how to uh, uh, how to destroy or how to recycle uh, the plastic matters so that's why i included this uh, also i uh, talk about uh, what quality control is all about because quality assurance give you the sop but you have to follow that sop uh, good manufacturing practices then documentation is equally important always remember documentation whatever you do you say mm, we have the brc uh, uh, brc thing implemented at our uh, uh, plant but you don't have any documentation proof that means you are not doing anything sure because uh, if you don't have any evidence what you are doing how i can trust you that you are doing uh, uh, the quality control as per the given norms or uh, whatever quality assurance system okay then defect finding that we have discussed in earlier slide also why uh, the west management is uh, uh, equally important because uh, nowadays in all the standards brc uh, even fssc usfda they also ask you uh, what sort of west you generate and how you uh, make sure that uh, that the west is uh, properly uh, means managed or west management process is properly implemented at your plant so that's why uh, uh, you have to also have to uh, need to be adherent with your um, uh what do we say uh, local bodies that is uh, observing body in maharashtra it is mpcb maharashtra pollution control board and they always uh, that uh, that they always observe you what you are doing and what sort of waste you are doing is that hazardous non hazardous what and there are four uh, sort of uh, license they issue to you on that basis what sort of waste you do and there is a white a green orange and uh, red okay that is on the based on the category okay next slide please yes production uh, it includes input of raw material process of raw material by means of machinery or manual process uh, there need to be control on recipe why i say this uh, control on recipe always give you the uh, the specific defined quality of your product uh because um whatever you do as an input 
there are some raw materials which are uh, which are chemicals uh, uh, which affects your final product quality or whatever the raw material goes inside that should follow the stringent recipe control without that you can't achieve consistent quality consistent uh, uh, means acceptance at the market so that's why uh, control of recipe is required that's why material uh, means whatever uh the material should be released from qc quantity to be added sequence of addition process parameter to be followed so these are uh, things need to be followed because uh, without that uh, you can't uh, you can't uh, control your recipe uh, then oprp ccp to be followed defect to be report online other into online qc rejection to be reported uh, efficiency should be get major to control repetitive issue Uh, efficiency uh, give you the uh, fair amount of idea uh, means efficiency report uh, that uh, that have uh, breakdown issues or product rejection issues or so all issues so uh, this efficiency should get measured and should get analyzed to control the repetitive issue and to uh, do the better uh, management of the plant next slide please Uh, this is product release process <coughs> quality control should follow the product release process as defined by qa it can be chemical sensory or microbiological it, what means what your quality assurance has defined uh, the product release process that should be 100% follow and then only you have to release your final product otherwise you have the uh, quality defects you have the inconsistent quality and uh, no customer acceptance uh, rejections or customer end a lot of thing can happen so that's why product release process is also equally important after the process uh, from the production next slide next slide please yes uh, r and d and npd uh, these uh, we'll see r and d and npd what they basically do uh, they develop a product um, and uh, that product either a very new product or sometimes uh, a old product can do a revamping of the product that is also part of r and d and npd team uh, sometimes they do cost effectiveness means they uh, replace some ingredient they add some ingredients to uh, uh, is not to affect the quality but the cost effectiveness of the final product uh, sometimes they do a completely new product Uh, to uh, 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 completely new product to uh, what we say uh, to market as per the vision of the company and uh, these are the uh, this is very basic i am talking about uh, there are also lot of uh, things happen around r and d and npd and it is always a great learning to means an understanding uh, if you work in r and d and npd because uh, your approach uh, towards the ingredients uh, the Uh, function of the ingredients uh, and all about all uh, uh, means all about the quality control i will say uh, that also get very much developed even the sensory evaluation part means the sensory uh, evaluation part is also uh, involved in npd and r and d because uh, these people have to uh, take the product approval on the base of quality control np uh, quality control sensory then product shelf life so all this means you you develop yourself if you work in r and d and npd you develop yourself uh, as a uh, in all aspects because it is not only the new product development it, it is it is it is a whole lot of uh, this, uh, 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 thing and it is a labor pain job okay because you do 100 uh, new product but uh, you don't know which will get click to the market which will is the cost effective and which will company will approve there are some uh, barriers to get the approval of the product there are some ingredients which are not allowed so you uh, you stop your uh, r&d and npd there are some specific product you add which is not mentioned by fssi so your product will be like um, the product will be go uh, like a, a specific product industry specific so these are the thing so that uh, you learn and you also learn about um, i must say uh, the legal requirement and all that things okay next slide please uh 
uh, these are the uh, means uh, one liner i must say but uh, uh, maintenance and utility responsible for all type of maintenance at maximum of time uh, all type of maintenance as i said uh, majorly the breakdown and the preventive uh, maintenance and the predictive maintenance these are the responsibility of the maintenance and utility because uh, if you keep the maximum of time then only your efficiency will match you will run your uh, factory cost effectively and uh, means maximum up time is the target for maintenance and utility because without that you can't produce and uh, you can't achieve your target so that is what the requirement is hr and ir these are uh, and this is most critical thing i can say because they uh, look after the recruitment manpower salary union issues grievances training and development employee engagement uh, see they uh, these people do the recruitments they provide you the manpower to uh, required for to run your plant uh, they do uh, the salaries uh, they uh, plan the salaries uh, they do the budgeted salary uh, sometimes unbudgeted so union issues they have to follow then they have to listen to the grievances of the employee they have to uh, arrangement because if you want to grow uh, as a means as a individual or a, as a employee uh, they have to uh, do the training and development then employee engagement in various activity to develop their self okay accounts and finance these uh, generally do the budgetary things budgeting planning uh, vendor payments and uh, other legal payments that is what uh these people do this is also uh, a very uh, this is uh, uh, this is very painful job okay but i am mentioning in a one liner okay supply chain this is uh, uh, purchasing of the raw material uh, uh, billing for the dispatches and uh, planning the dispatches uh, then uh, planning for the raw material where to keep that raw material uh, whether it is temperature controlled whether it is ambient uh what uh, what capacity i got at my plant if not uh, the capacity is not there then where should i uh, store nearby how i can plan how fast the material will reach to me uh, what lead time i should calculate so all this all these things supply chain is uh, supply chain is means it is a, it is a, it is a most most involved thing because if you don't have the material how you can uh, do the production and all that and how you do the dispatches okay it it is uh, nowadays it is uh, required everywhere so also to keep your it system always up and running because we do the erp system and we do a lot of things uh, when we say we don't have network i can't talk to you and all that things so it is involved in that regulatory and legal to maintain all legal and regulatory requirement of um, any factory or new uh, upcoming things they will uh, uh, inform to a management and they will uh, say these these are the new regulatory things or legal things we have to implement to run the factory uh, sales you uh, people know to to for the product sell to a market marketing to advertise the market uh, make a placement of product in market uh, because uh, without uh, placing product in the market you can't uh, uh, do all these things so this is also uh, essential part okay sales and marketing next slide okay uh, this is also nowadays uh, erp implementation is a uh, uh, part of any industry because this uh, this get implemented to get hold of each and every corner of industry this provide data to analyze and for further process because mm -hmm. data mm -hmm. always plays major role for further study or action this is generally used in a very uh, in every department of any organization the most rigid and strong erp system provides a better result in terms of data and its management and also controls on users what does it mean uh, erp erp is a system uh, as i say enterprise resource planning uh these these uh, these this means you you uh, heard about sap tally ban oracle some of the sap is one of the rigid system as a erp because uh, uh at every at every uh, function there is a erp implementation and that will create a data even in our our system i will say in production system i must say uh, when when you implement erp for the production okay uh, 
uh, you have to enter your input and you don't uh, so whoever the doing the input addition is not having the authority to erase it or delete it or uh, or just make any changes to it why because whatever you do you have to do it authentically that's why these are not given to anybody that's why erp system is a necessity because it's give you the exact data it can give you the uh, uh, insight about what uh, what sort of um, uh, let's say raw material is available at your plant and that raw material for how many days you can run uh, your uh, plant then what 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 is in a red zone red zone means uh, that uh, going to be end up that raw material uh where you have dispatch uh, what are the manpower we have used what are the electricity we used what are the expenses we have done uh, so where we have to control that's why erp system is important also in quality release process you will get the rejection how many rejection you have done how many hit and miss you have done uh, so in a, in a dispatch process how many hit and miss you have done that also uh you will get in that particular in one in one uh, particular data or one run so that is why uh, erp is implemented it is uh, very much focus on a business it will give you the uh, proper insight about the business where you are lacking what actions you have to take that's why i feel erp is the uh, um, uh, what we say important things to be get implemented uh, see a sap uh, is a expensive thing okay Because SAP, uh, what uh, whatever you implement, you have pay a lot of money. But tally and uh, oracle can be uh, a useful thing uh, to a medium scale or small scale industry uh, personnel, and that will also give you a very good insight about your business, what you are doing, and where you are lacking. Next slide, please. Okay, these are the things. EHS means environment, health, and safety. Uh, there are three R. in ehs reduce reuse and recycle uh, reduce means whatever uh, resources you are using uh, reduce them okay if possible reuse them and if possible recycle them because see uh, this this directly affecting uh, the environment and at the same time cost cost is a major uh, thing in any industry that's why we have to we have to think in both the way cost and environmental way that's why we use 3r in our ehs reduce reuse and recycle this will definitely means uh, there is one uh, classic example i have uh, there is one industry in pune uh, they used to uh, have a huge huge use of uh, packing material and that packing material uh, they don't have any count on that what is happening how is it happening they just because uh, nobody was uh, counting on that but one fine day somebody has find out okay there is lot of waste is going out of the factory so what to do with that so they uh, make uh, started making efficiency report for the packing material means how they can reduce by that uh, they started reducing reducing the use of their packing material then they have done uh, uh, A reuse means whatever the raw material earlier that you used to just lit up that raw material in the bhatti and uh, just go away then they started reusing in which matter they can reuse whether it is going plastic whether it is going aluminium what we can do so th- they started reuse and recycle okay so uh, these these give them uh, won't you believe but uh, uh, a crores of rupees profit and also at the same time environment safety because Uh, they started caring for the environment also at the same time so this this is the uh, this is a thing that you do with the 3r and then i talk about the pdca plan do check act I means whatever thing you do plan for that properly do it check it and act accordingly how uh, it is for the just to say it is very easy but when you say plan when you are doing new thing plan it properly make a team take a advice from them take a inputs from them then do the things okay then check the efficiency of that thing and act 
on the things which is lacking there so that's why pdca cycle is uh, most important uh, in ehs or even in implementation of any new thing then i will talk about uh, hira hazard identification risk assessment hazard identification and risk assessment uh, is a process to identify uh, the hazard in any process and uh, to after identifying hazard we we do the risk assessment and after the risk assessment we categorize the risk whether in in which category it fall uh, whether it is uh, insignificant minor moderate major or catastrophic, catastrophic. okay on that basis uh, you plan your risk assessment and you do the uh, either either of the control either administrative or engineering control or uh, there are uh, things to do with the i mean risk assessment and you uh, implement that okay and uh, uh, this is uh, hira is very much required okay which is uh, there are a lot of things we do uh, we do it regularly so we don't understand the severity or or the major flaws in that so we do it regularly and uh, one fine day the accident will happen and the something wrong will go and then that time we will say are yaar uska to kiya hi nahi hira karte the acha tha so, so that will happen so that should not happen that's why uh, uh, wherever you do do the hazard identification and risk assessment and then plan your uh, control on that and uh, see uh, there is a risk in everything industrial uh, i mean ehs what they say uh, you have to means do your hazard identification and hazard identification and risk assessment and you have to uh, means uh, reduce that risk to acceptable level risk can't be eliminated at any given point so you have to make the risk to a acceptable level so hira will help you to make it to acceptable level that's it and uh, next slide please okay so that's it from my side thanks a lot uh thank you so much sir it was very interesting side uh, uh, slides as i told you before be uh, in spite of reading the presentation i would like to hear you <laughs> it was yeah, truly valuable to, to have this uh, uh, webinar like yeah. uh, uh, freshers we always have some queries but this uh, queries cannot be solved by anyone like what yeah. is production what is it the specific word yeah. it the production field don't miss the food field don't know the what is it in the food why yes. is it required that was a very uh, good uh, point i was also worried about uh, what mm -hmm. it should be in the food industry and yeah. uh, like uh, growing uh, advanced techniques and uh, technologies this uh, tally sap and everything is very yeah. important getting into uh, any field not particularly food but uh, food is also gaining the same technologies nowadays right so it was very valuable very much uh, knowledgeable for the freshers who are going to get into interviews nowadays it will be uh, very helpful yeah. there for them yeah that's why design uh, as per the requirement of the students because uh, majorly see uh, as I, as you must be aware you got the question why the it is i involved in the, all that because uh, because see uh, right now they should have the knowledge what is happening around what is happening yeah, yeah. in it. exactly that's no. why I included it okay yeah uh, so we have a, always have a second a part of the webinar the question answer session that would okay. be great if you solve some of our queries from the participants sure. we have just uh, drawn down some yeah. so first is namita khedekar what huh. is hasep plan in food processing hasep plan as no no i am not getting you hasep plan P has a plan. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Has a plan. It is a uh, 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 first thing. The thing she is aware about the has a. Then only she will uh, understand it easily. Because see, uh, the has a is a hazard analysis critical control point. Okay, we uh, there is a decision making tree. On that basis, we we do uh, the hazard identification. Okay, and we do the control point and critical control point out yeah. of. okay uh, and there are seven principles of hasap 
that uh, yes. she can easily find out on uh, any of the sites and uh, she can check it out okay so there are seven principles of hasap that need to be followed and there are decision making tree uh, which gives you uh, whether uh, uh, this is a critical control point or control point or it is not a risk it is as simple as that okay so on that basis we make a has a plan and we implement to um, uh, uh, that particular process uh, that is a has a plan yeah uh, next is yogesh sharma is there any online workshop or program for hasap and risk analysis uh not as such uh, but uh, i can find uh, if she want okay she can uh, uh message me so i can find out what exactly on because see online awareness can be available but that very basic yeah yeah okay workshop is important actually yeah. so if if they want we can arrange one from our consultants no issue yeah sure sir uh yeah. next is what are the different accreditation bodies requirements uh, mandatory ones uh, what is different accreditation bodies accreditation okay okay, okay. no, uh, no what are the which are the mandatory ones no 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 i'm not getting your question exactly what uh what are the different accreditation bodies and what are huh. mandatory ones no 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 see uh, there are uh, nothing is like mandatory in uh, food safety standards okay? okay these are all voluntary standards okay, okay. but why we implement that is a, a question right now we have the mandatory that is fssr okay in our uh, in our india india you have to follow the basic guidelines of fssr to yeah. uh, get the fssr certificate and to uh, do the business okay. okay that is one thing and all these other things like uh, brc has iso us fda these are all voluntary but why we take this because these are very stringent and when you go for the export or uh, you want to make your system very stringent that time we implement the standard and this give the edge to sell your product because see as soon as somebody see iso 22000 or fssc 22000 certified company they make sure that okay they are following the norm so what i am eating is definitely a safe food yes yes, yes. Okay. yeah uh, is there is one curious question from uh, tejas kakade is yeah. is there any international auditor course <laughs> not access international auditor course all these whatever the has a uh, means uh, as a uh, i uh, uh, means then fssc and brc these are all designed by uh, a design as per the international standard yeah. so it is uh, it is uh, means needless to say uh, that after uh, going through or after achieving the certificate you are you are la means lead lead auditor but you have to go through the process to become a independent auditor okay so there is a process after completion uh, the graduation uh, you have to uh, means you need to for brc you have to have five years of experience industry either in manufacturing quality because uh, what they see they see uh, whether you are uh, very much aware about the system what is happening around if you are very new uh, maybe uh, you not that effectively learn uh, what brc is saying or what usfd is saying or what iso is saying or what hasap is saying so that's why uh, there are some uh, years of experience is required before approaching or before taking any admission into these courses okay so not uh, sir, international but these all are international standard okay so my curious question is if i am a lead auditor in india and uh, i pursue a job in abroad am i uh, eligible on the same certificate as ali yes yes he is uh, uh, but uh, he have to follow uh, what are the what are the drop down practices made by that particular accreditation body or that particular country that he have to follow then only he can be, because see if he is uh, somebody is approaching to him definitely uh, there are uh, some chances in that country so they will take care means how to train him on all that thing that can be managed okay uh, next one is 
what are the uh, good organization to be certified from for LAN? Uh, for, for which standard? Uh, like auditor courses. <laughs> this is this is uh, this is uh, I can't say, but uh, <laughs> because this is this is uh, yeah, live yeah. session, uh, yeah. I can't uh, disclose the name. But uh, if somebody want, uh, they can message me on my LinkedIn, so I can guide them. Okay, uh, Miss, uh, if it's my question, if a pro yeah. private organization, how can we judge a private organization if he's a um, well? well good for the particular certification miss like uh, take an example of a x industry uh, mm -hmm. x certification body is good at giving the ls certificate course good at so how can we identify it at a uh, see, uh, it is it is um, you have to check uh, what are their uh, uh, means uh, feedbacks okay, okay. Uh, means uh, as means this is very personal what i'm sharing as you were in industry, you will get the feedback. Uh, this, this is these are the uh, accreditation body or these are the certification body. They have very good set of people. So, as a part of industry, you will have always have a feedback and always. Uh, uh, that is, you have to build because I can't say because I, as I sort of told you, this is live session. Live session. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, personally, somebody can message me. I can suggest them what to do. Yeah, and what great, to do. great, great. Uh, next question is. What is difference between certification body and a regulatory body, and what is accreditation body? About three, all three. Okay, first is uh, what 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 is certification body? Certification body means who uh, do the certification. Okay, yes. means okay. it is as simple as that. Uh, they do your certification for FSC, HACCP, PRC, whatever USFDA, whatever you want. These are the certification body. And then, then you ask. Regulatory. regulatory. Regulatory means that uh, uh, means regulatory means it is exactly to be specific. It is uh, uh, the government uh, governing bodies that is regulatory body. It's like and, uh, SSKI, ISO and all. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The accreditation uh, who do the accreditation of this certification and all that they, they are the accredited. They mm -hmm. do the accreditation uh, for them because uh, finally you need to be have a control on the all these things no? yeah uh, so that's why there is an accreditation board mm -hmm. uh, so that's all with this curious query section so yeah. it's my personal question uh, what you suggest as a uh, fresher to have which course uh, for a basic knowledge in food safety which course to be carried out um see uh, they can try the uh, has some principles yeah okay uh, because that will give it see uh, uh, as uh, I just uh, forgot to mention, uh, you required in any of the standard you required to be have the uh, food safety system need to be there. Okay, so HACCP is a very much uh, means yeah, means nowadays uh, uh, very easy to understand, and uh, that will give you the edge while uh, uh, going to any industry. Because if you uh, go somewhere and somebody will ask you what is HACCP and what how it is implemented and what are the seven principles and all that, that will be a little difficult to do. So that basic uh, HACCP training can be done for two days and that can be helpful for this new uh, uh, upcoming things. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you for this uh, very much uh knowledgeable session. I would like to appreciate all the PPT efforts and your explanation part was very amazing. And uh, we would like to have this session continue uh, later in the uh, coming up series, third series okay. we will have planning for. Uh, okay. We'll uh, like to invite you for that even yes. with the new topics and all. And even yes. uh, you, talk, uh, you told about uh, having a session or we have workshop you have, uh, with yeah. your consultancy yeah. we would like to look up for the opportunity also we will uh, gather mm -hmm. some of our food techies who are really interested and we will approach you yeah. with a yeah. formal approval yeah sure sure yeah thanks so sir. thanks for being here and thanks for yeah. giving us a valuable knowledge yeah thanks sir. thanks thank you it's pleasure pleasure yeah. thank you 
uh, and then there is an announcement for the uh, other uh, for tomorrow's session yeah um, so i would like to mention to everyone uh, present here to uh, don't miss the opportunity for coming up tomorrow at the same time uh, tomorrow we have a session on science behind thesis and undertaking of seasoning understanding of seasoning sorry uh, mr harmandeep singh he uh, is an uh, production uh, uh, sorry, product development manager in uh, fs ipl it's a uh, food safety india private limited it's a uh, uh, sister concern of uh, vkl spice so uh, don't miss the chance to know about the spices and seasonings uh, because these are also a part of a food uh, a part a major part india is a great producer in spices and it would be a very good uh, knowledgeable session tomorrow so we yeah. would like to uh, invite you for the session too <laughs> it yeah. would be thank very you. great if you join us tomorrow yes yes will be there yeah thank you so much thank you we are thank ending you. up with the session yeah yeah, yeah. thank you yes